Okay. Well, this is the Green Valley Camera Club's Multimedia Special Interest Group. And we are uh, starting our recording today. And so this is October the 5th. And I'm in charge of getting everybody in today. Um, and Gene is just checking in. So we will have uh, him too as soon as he gets his mic turned on. There we go. Uh, I need to. I need to have. Oh well, there's a good picture. <laughs> oh, we haven't got my my video turned on. No, you don't. <laughs> There's my smiling face. There you are. And and I'm in Arizona. We just got here. Just got to Arizona. Okay. And you drove? No, we flew in. We flew. We flew Saturday. It was a great, great experience. He's Thanks. smiling. I see that. <laughs> no, my wife got wheelchair service, so we get on first. We get preferential treatment. It was kind of a nice way to fly. Yeah. I've done that when I was had a pair of crutches. <laughs> it's good service, yeah. Maybe someday I'll tell you about my experience flying in a wheelchair. Flying in a wheelchair? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah? No, we, we don't have the time. It's a long story. Long story. Okay, well, yeah. Mine is kind of a long one, too, because I was coming back from Dublin. Uh, That's a long way. Yeah, it was, but actually, actually, I did it once coming back from Toronto. It really does facilitate a lot, especially on a, in a large airport where you have to go a long ways. Anyway, so hours, everybody, and uh, does anybody have anything to share today? I can share something at some point. Oh, I don't good. have to be first. Somebody else has something they'd like to share. Who else has stuff to share today? Just Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Just a second. I've got to uh I've got to let you be able to share. Uh okay, you can share now. Okay. Uh this is a uh it's a little video. Uh it's about two and a half minutes long. There's a, I'm sure you've all heard about like with the firefighter rescue people that they have the jaws of life and there's a car accident and they cut open the car and they get the person out and stuff. Well, there's a company, it's a Dutch company called Homatro and Homatro makes all this safety equipment for these first responders. And so this is a, a, a video that we did they had these, um, oh, once a year, they had these training classes for the first responders. And they come in and they have experts that show how to use the tools and better ways to use the tools and stuff. So I was hired to uh, document the two, day, two days of training. And then from there, I went in and we put together a video to help promote for the next year and the coming year. So anyway, this is this is one of those videos. So the first part is is some video, and then the second part is some stills, and then there's also some narration. Uh, there's a voiceover that uh, we had somebody do it. So anyway, I'll see if we can share that for you. Okay, uh, Kevin, how do you yeah. spell that? Homatro. You'll see off the top of my head. It's. Uh, I'll see. <laughs> It's H O L M A T R O. Okay. And you'll see it at the end of the video. There's a, a little banner for their website and stuff. I, I want to credit them accurately. Oh, no worries. Okay, sure. Your sound. My screen share video. Hi, Peg. Hello, Peg. Hey. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
The whole Matro Rescue Experience provides hands-on extrication training to first responders with the latest Homatro tools. One training day consists of a morning session, followed by a rotation through four separate hands-on scenarios, which may include car on its side with difficult access, car versus semi rear side underrun, car on roof with crush, crash injury syndrome. To add greater depth to the program, industry experts are invited to participate. Recently, we received a visit from Homatro safety team doctors who discussed medical trauma response and provided instruction on extrication from vehicles with complicated safety features. The people behind the Homatro rescue experience are pure industry professionals. The instructors are well-trained and experienced. In addition, separate qualified Homatro staff will be on-site to monitor and ensure everyone's safety. For more information on offering this type of event, please email info at homatro-usa.com or contact your local Homatro dealer. Okay. Wow. There we go. My God. I don't think I'll me. order one right away. That I don't video. want to ever have to have <laughs> one used. <laughs> that video makes That's me feel nice inadequate. Video. Yeah. Kevin, I really liked right at the very beginning how it was it was fast photography and it was almost like a heartbeat. Yes. Your photos were being shown on, on that beat. And I that was very effective, particularly at the at the beginning of, of the film. Very nice. Yeah, and Thank you used some great B-roll stuff too, Kevin, and particularly a uh, good use of depth of field. Thank you. Did you shoot that with your Mark II? Uh, well, there was a combination of things, actually. The, uh, some of it was shot with the drone. Some of it was with the Mark II. Uh, the still photography was shot with the, just my Canon camera. And um, so anyway, it's, that's, I think that was part of the fun of also putting that video together was to just try to show the experience for somebody maybe who's never been to been to that and they're like well what's this all about what do we do yeah and so anyway i think it it came across pretty nicely yeah that's great did you use any jibs or sliders uh no not for this oh cool so well uh, you made me feel totally inadequate after i saw that i went wow yeah. Why is that, Gene? <laughs> it's just so professional. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's all well, I can say. <laughs> well, you know, the part of the part of the uh, thing is, it's the opportunity to get to do something like that for a company, and so, you know, the the thing that I did like is really the only uh, thing that they had said to me was they gave me the 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 script after it was done for the voiceover. And then we got somebody to do the, the voiceover work, which was great. And then basically I just kind of filled in the video with what was going being said on screen at the time and everything else. So uh, yeah, anyway, it was a lot of fun to put together and, and they really liked the, the way that finally turned out, so. I, I, they, I hope they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are they using this for a for a promotional for further uh, events? Yeah, it's I if uh, they've used it, they use it for you know going forward. They have events 
usually they have one event somewhere in the United States every year, and then they'll have something outside of the United States around the world. Uh, so they, they'll do like South America, they'll do something in Europe, and they try to mix it up, you know, so this one was in Denver, you know, next year, it might be on the East Coast somewhere kind of a thing. So anyway, it was it was a lot of fun to do. And uh, it was very uh, challenging. The one thing that was challenging was, you know, there, these guys are working in these, these junked up cars that these wrecked cars. And so you're trying to get in there with a the camera, you're trying not to get hit with glass or metal or anything else that's going on as they're doing it. So uh, it was definitely challenging, but uh, it was a lot of fun to do. So super nice people as well. I'm curious, was your connection? How did you connect to that company? You know, uh, the Reader's Digest version is that there is a company back in Illinois, Central Illinois, that makes uh, basically fire lights and fire equipment for, you know, like on the fire truck, they've got lights for nighttime and stuff, these external products. And so they make a wide variety of products for firefighters. And the guy who ran the company ended up working, he ended up going to Halmatro. And then he said, hey, we've got this thing. I want you to come out and shoot it for us. And so anyway, a lot of, a lot of business stuff is through your connections. You know, whatever uh, you're, you're, if you go in and it's like anything, if you do a good job for somebody and they stay at that company, great you're still probably gonna be in with them. And if they leave, they usually remember you and go, hey, you did this for us at the ABC company. I'll come over here and do it at our new company. So that's kind of how that all uh, came about. I think the company was, the company's based out of uh, somewhere suburbs in New York or something. So anyway, real nice people and the international people that were there that came from the parent company were super nice too. So it, it made it a lot of fun to do. That was a two day shoot? Two days, yep. And and trust me, uh, when you're shooting it all by yourself, when you're doing some video and then the still photography, you're, you're, you're needing all that, <clears throat> excuse me, all that time to get a lot of stuff uh, to be able to put something together, so. How long did it take you then to uh, produce the Oh, I, I would say that's probably in the ballpark of 20 hours. Not, not horrible. I mean, really it's once it kind of, you know, starts going, a video starts going together and you, and, and everybody here has done video. So they kind of know as you start working on it, you kind of rough it up and you, in a case like this, I roughed up the video. Then I sent it to the client for them to look at it. What do you think? What do we need to change? And then they come back with suggestions, and then you make those changes, uh, whatever they whatever they want you to do. And you know, so anyway, it uh, it uh, works out good in that regard. It's it's nice to have that feedback from from people. Right. The the truck that you came across. Yes. Slow motion. So so I you left you slowed it down. Yep. After it started, it was fast, and then you slowed yeah. it down. I noticed. Yes. Yeah. That the one thing that was uh, that was kind of funny about that one, the 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 event. It was it's a Saturday Sunday event, and so on Sunday it's supposed to wrap up at five. The event's done. Every, all the firefighters, the first responders, all leave, and then they said to me, "Hey, we want you to get when the truck leaves. We want to get a shot of that." And I'm thinking, "Okay, fine. Well, let's let's get this party going." Well, it, it got to be about three hours after the event got done. It's getting on to eight o'clock and the light is starting to go. And I'm like, uh, you know, this has got to happen. So uh, basically when they got everything, all their equipment packed up, it's like, okay, send the truck. And they went through and I got one take of it and that was it. And then they were gone and they were down the road back to New York. So uh well, I was like, boy, I hope I got that. <laughs> well, you did, and it was gorgeous. Yeah. Well, thanks. So we just, we sped up the video, and then in the middle, we just slowed it down so you could see the name, and then sped it up again at the end, so. I'm curious, Kevin, last, I think it was last week, we had the discussion about the storyboard. Yes. And since 
being um, requested by, by the, the, the business, did they have the storyboards for you or you were just to be shooting and then create, you know, that video? And so did you go in with a particular um, outline of what you were going to be shooting? No, really. Uh, and, and, and I did see the discussion on storyboards, which I thought was really good last week. Um, in the case of this, it basically the client just says, go in and cover the event like a journalist would. So just document everything that's going on. And then really, after that, they, like I said, short of having that little narration that you heard, it's basically up to me to try to figure out what, how, you know, like the heartbeat at the beginning, that was my idea of, okay, let's tie in firefighters, first responders, and the quick clips with the heartbeat and match that up with the heartbeat. And then from there, it's just, okay, let's put together, like at the end, those, those still photos, just have some, you know, the, again, some of the activity that's going on and also, you know, people enjoying themselves. You saw some people smiling, having fun. So it's not all serious kind of a thing. So I would say that, you know, when we were talking, when you were talking last week about storyboards, I never get a storyboard from any client. No one ever does that. They just, they say, go out and shoot it. And then uh, later on, after it's all said and done, they might have something, uh, sometimes we'll have a shot list, but I'd say most of the time they just say, cover it. And then we'll put something together when it's all said and done. So every client is different. Every person's different how, how a person wants to work. If you're Linda, trying Linda to work with a client. Have her picture on. I'm sorry, Peg, what was that? Linda doesn't have her picture on. Oh. <laughs> Linda and, and Larry. They're hiding. Yeah, our, 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 they don't have their mics on either. Yeah, but I think they can hear. Um, or Larry. We haven't seen Larry for a long time. Yeah, they're incognito. Well, they're not letting anybody out of Canada. I just went by oh, there. There's Larry. There. They have a big sign up. It says, you're not welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Busy morning. You. Anyway, back back to your storyboard thing and, yes, and the clients not giving you one. If there's a lot of information to be passed, if you can pry a decent script out of a client, then there's there's your basis for the storyboard. You you shoot to illustrate the script, but I don't see maybe other than a couple of uh, bullet points that you got much from them on that. So you yeah, know, they didn't have much direction to work with. It was a good job. Well, thank you. Well, you know, really it's, uh, I think of it as after all these years of doing, I've been self-employed still photographer for over 30 years, working with businesses and stuff. And a lot of times you might have somebody with you, an art director or somebody with you that's, directing the shoot of how how they want things to go but i would most of the time people just clients i'd say just they have a general idea of what they're after maybe and they just give you a little bit or a lot of times i'll hear you know what to do just you go and do it and they just let you let you be so uh, I'm, I'm good either way if, if somebody's very specific about what they want to do then i'm happy with that if they if they don't know what they want to do then Let's make some pretty pictures and we'll come up with something when it's all said and done. So did they, did you have an idea ahead of time as to what activities they would be having and where uh, so you could get to things as they were being done as opposed to, oops, uh, they're already finished. Right. Uh, well, the one thing that on this shoot was good was in the morning they had their classroom where they had the, the, uh, different lecture people talk. In the afternoon, they had four stations that were outside that you saw with the different cars and the semis and all that. And so since I knew that it was gonna be two days, I made sure that I would hit, because they would literally do like one hour at a station and they would go to the next station, then to the next station. So what I tried to do is I would make sure that, okay, at, at the first station, I've got to get, today I'm gonna to get video, tomorrow I'm gonna to get stills. And so basically made sure that I did that. 
so that I had everything covered so I didn't miss an event, either stills and or video. Were you using a video camera or DSLR? Well, for the for the uh, video, I've got a uh, Canon Mark II, uh, uh, a C100 Mark II, and I use that for the video. And then I've got a drone and you know GoPro and all kinds of other good stuff. So lots of uh, toys and tools. I kind of talk about it like a it's kind of like having as a still photographer, you got a bunch of lenses in your camera bag, but you're like a painter that's got his palette of colors and you know you're not going to use them all on every every shoot that you do but every once in a while you're like okay well let's pull out this lens or let's do this or let's do that did you end up using all of the all <laughs> the equipment that you took <laughs> uh no but that's okay i honestly think that uh for for this shoot especially we didn't do anything with gopro uh because there really wasn't anything moving but a lot of it drone and then using the, the video camera on the ground and then the still camera uh, a bunch for, for everything. So yeah, it, it, you always want to have more goodies than less goodies. And it, that's all about options, I think. Looks so, like everything must have been handheld. Uh, pretty much, pretty much. It, so You're in close and and you're in close and you're trying to, like I said, especially when you saw like the guys were inside working and they're cutting out a seat or something and you're trying to come in the other door and there's broken glass or you're trying to stick your camera through the back window because they've knocked that out. And, mm. uh, it was interesting. It was, it, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and uh, to see how these these guys do this stuff is amazing. So you know, God forbid any of us are ever in some sort of a bad accident like that. If they've got these tools, uh, you'll be glad they did because they'll get you out of the car and get you out of the car pretty quick. So that's a good thing. We're just watching you, Grace. I'm, I'm typing an every... So uh, Linda says that she has an old laptop um, and it has, has a camera, but not a mic. And then she bought a mic, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, actually, Linda, I don't need to type you an answer um, because I, you can hear me. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm gonna just say that. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're, we're glad to have Linda join us, even though she has to stay silent for right now. Uh, hope, hope she gets, a, help. Linda, I hope you get uh, uh, everything working by next week, too. So, okay, Larry, do you have anything to share? Oh, he's muted. There we go. Yeah, yeah sure, if you'd like. I've got uh, up, up till, I don't know, maybe last month, the month before, I was working on uh, a video from our trips to New Zealand, and I finally got it done. And I had done the same thing the year before on our trips to Australia. These are started all from uh, stills, because I wasn't shooting video back in those days. And it was 25 years ago as well. So it was kind of fun that way. Anyway, I can't we, remember 25 years ago. <laughs> well, I, hey, I know what you're talking about because currently I'm working on one from our trip to Yukon and Alaska the same amount of time ago. And on, uh, on Australia and New Zealand, I had already put together a slideshow on it, you know, using a, a program that isn't very good now, but it was the best I could find back then. On Yukon, Alaska, I hadn't even done that. I had to go back and try and figure out where all these pictures were. I had notes on them, but I had to go to Google Maps to find out where a lake was and, you know, uh, put things in sequence that way. It was a challenge. Anyway, on, on the New Zealand one, what I've got, I've got a, about a minute and a half intro to this New Zealand video, which is on YouTube. And uh, you can get at it by uh, Googling Larry Springford channel YouTube. And you can get at all my stuff there. There's about 20 of them. So if you want, I'll run this one through and if I can figure out how to do it. 
Okay. So I think I have to start this first. Yes. And uh, then I have to pause it. Oh, there it is. There's the pause. Okay. Share the screen. And do I have to do something about sound? Uh, yeah. Well, yes. Use the, the down at the bottom on the left. Check the one that says use computer. I oh, there it is. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yep. And optimize screen sharing. Okay. And hopefully here I should be able to make this go. Okay, here it goes, folks. Did you, did you click screen share because we're not seeing it? Whoops. Okay. I guess I didn't. I thought I had. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I, I did. Get down in the corner? Right corner. No, it's right down in the bottom. Screen right share. down the bottom. Bottom, middle. Yeah, sir. Alt S. What did I do? Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, screen, screen. Oh, okay. You got a black screen now? Not yet. Nope. Oh, there, share. There you go. Okay, there we are. Now I got to get back to it. Or no, there is that it right there? It should be. Should yeah, it? it's it. Play it. Full screen. There we go. Okay, there you go. Are you using a slide to the right transition? Yeah, yes. Is there music or sound? Because we don't hear it. It's not going, eh? No. You didn't join with computer sound or whatever it was. Yeah, I did. did it. Oh, did you? Huh. So what part of New Zealand is this? Uh, this, this this is both islands, ah. but I don't understand why. In many view. So this would be an intro to a longer video of your trip. Is that yeah. what you're <laughs> So that's it. Sorry I didn't get that sound going. I don't know what else I had to do there. Well, it was just some music? Well, it was music and narration. Oh, narration. It, it has to do with something when you do the screen share. Yeah. Share oh. with computer audio was not selected. Okay. Okay, so you probably need to stop sharing it. Yeah, time. there it is, stop share. At the top? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just looking go. around for any other tabs that I missed. I... Okay, and Linda. Linda found her camera. Oh, wait a minute, we see her. <laughs> Good, welcome. You got to unmute your mic, Linda. You can do it Lower right on the left hand screen. corner. Larry, the photography was beautiful that you had in that slideshow. Gorgeous. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a fabulous country to uh, travel. Yeah. Now, did everybody notice there was no herky jerky today? The sound went through perfectly on both those videos because it did on mine. Well, not mine. The transitions for Larry just jerked through. And, and yeah, it jerked. Yeah. They were not smooth. It was smooth. It wasn't. No. No. no, Linda, we still don't have your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lip reading for you. <laughs> um, if you click the little triangle next to the microphone, it might give you options on what to share. Hmm. No. 
Okay, ah, you got an external. Okay. okay. Well, you can type in the chat. I'll, I will pass it along or everybody can read it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so. um, Doug, Doug Stenerson sent me a YouTube video um, <laughs> link for a travel a video that he just made. And it's really, really well done. I'll share it with you, Grace, and then um, you can share it in the notes with everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, you did share it. It's the one Yellowstone's involved. And yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, you want? Okay. I'll put the. I'll put the. Put that link in my in my notes to you. Okay. I'm curious, Larry, on your um, little slideshow there. Did, since it's been 25 years, did you have to scan photos for this or did you already, or were they slides originally or what, what was the status of those photos to begin with? We can't hear you. Your sound is off, Larry. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder. Um, the, uh, all these pictures were scanned back in about uh, 2002, 2003. That's what prompted me to join the computer club back in those days, because Bill Popejoy, who was running that kind of stuff said, hey, don't buy a scanner, we got one here. So I spent about two and a half years, um, about three days a week, or sorry, five days a week, most days, putting in an hour or two doing all my slides. And uh, so they were all scanned back then. And from uh, to, all from slides. All from slides, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I I've learned a lot of things since then that would have been good to have known before I did the scanning. I had to clean up a lot of them because I didn't get the dust off and stuff like that. Quite a project, isn't it? <laughs> oh God, yes, yes, yes. I still have a box full of old photos up in the closet. Someday. No. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch too. <laughs> I always think that's a thing that we 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 have these old slides or old film or whatever, and we think, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to scan this, and you do a couple, and you're like, wow, this is really dirty. You know, there's a bunch of junk on the film or whatever, and you think, I'm not going to take time to. Photoshop this stuff out, forget it. So I think that's why we appreciate our digital so much is usually short of some sensor dust, it's pretty clean. Yeah, my, we got inherited a big box of slides from my father and we started going through them all and they had these little spots on them. I couldn't figure out, I couldn't dust them off. I couldn't figure it out. Finally, I sent one to a friend of mine who worked at that time worked for Kodak. And he said, oh, he said they weren't stored well and the bugs ate them. I guess they get a little bit of mold on the emulsion and it eats a little pinhole right through it. So I'm with you. I put them back in the box and I maybe scan. I have a, a couple dozen of the best ones. And I said, I'm done. Well, what we've done is if we want to make a, a slideshow out of older photographs, we, we get the show set up with the photographs we want to use, and then we only fix those instead yeah. of starting at year zero and, and going forward. That's it's very smart. Lot. Very smart. <laughs> no, I'm just lazy. <laughs> and I'm finding that sometimes if I, if I get a non-reflective, I just use my phone and take a picture of the picture and it's a it's a, about as good as I could get on a scan mm -hmm. and a whole lot faster and what Paul's discovered as we go through all of our trip stuff and everything and uh, we're just basically saving people pictures the the other ones are because we're not going to do anything with them probably um, uh, that you know the scenery and stuff um, and the prints weren't that good to begin with some some of them and you know just four by six prints yeah. anyway well, so when i was when i was doing the scanning on the uh down in the, in the computer club back then they had a a stack loader so you just mm -hmm. put them in and they ran through 
the main thing was if I'd been smart enough to have dusted off the slides ahead of time before I did that, that would have, that would have <laughs> made a, a big difference. You know, that would have been great, but it was fast. I could do about 50 an hour. Mm -hmm. And while the uh, uh, machine was working, scanning away, I could take slides that were finished and I could do some basic photoshopping on them while um, it, the machine was scanning, you know, so I could, I could get a lot done in an hour, basically both scanning and basics photoshopping. But that's on that stack loader. No. Uh oh, Linda's back with new equipment. <laughs> if uh, nobody else has anything, I came across an article that I think would be interesting uh, for everyone. Uh, some of you may know that uh, we have a truck camper and we, we go on our travels in that. Uh, on the internet, there's a thing called Truck Camper Magazine, and there's a terrific article in there. So a woman who has um, um, her own film production company, and um, yeah, it's Tightline uh, Videos or something, or films. She had a project set up to do, to follow um, salmon up the uh, Columbia and into the Snake River and then to the Yankee Fork. It's going to be, uh, it's titled From Ocean to Idaho. And it's talking about all the troubles that fish has. She had this entire elaborate thing with a crew and reservations and everything all set up. And then COVID descended and the whole thing got scrapped. So she put together a truck camper and did it all herself. Um, I'll, um, I'll share the screen and show you. This is, uh, come on, screen two. Okay, there it is. Um, is everybody seeing that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, she has got a number of shorts from this on YouTube. I'm just going to spin this down and stop at a couple of the highlights. Um, she did it as a one woman uh, production company out there on the road. And one of the uh, one of the things that tickles me, there's the truck camper. This is a uh, what they call a pop up truck pop -up camper. Truck, yeah. The top of it pops up another 18 inches to two feet. Um, there it is, popped up. Yep. So she lived in it, and uh, yes, it's a little tight inside. Um, there she is with her rig. She has um, uh, drones, video, still photography. Here's wow. her shot list. I thought that was kind of cute. And like I said, this is on YouTube, and you can go and, and look at this. These are all the shooting locations. This one keeps on going up to the Yankee Fork. So at um, any rate, if you go to Truck Camper Magazine and do a search on From Ocean to Idaho, you can get this article. I'm going to un unsubscribe. Okay, how do I get out of this now? Oh, there. So you can go to uh, Truck Camper Magazine. You can look at the original article. Or you can go to YouTube and look at all of the shorts, and uh, it will be coming out as basically a feature-length film later on uh, this year, or first of next year. But um, I think her stuff is well done, and it's it's interesting uh, the process that she had to go through to get this. So, what was her name again, Brian? Uh, her name is Chris Milgate. Um, hang on. Chris Milgate, that's K-R-I-S-M-I-L-L-G-A-T-E. And it's uh, Tight Line Media. That's T-I-G-H-T-L-I-N-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com. Uh, she's got a nice website with uh, more stuff there. Um, she's, okay. she's a good videographer. So she was... Uh 
This was salmon and in Idaho, is that correct? It, it follows them all the way from the Pacific Ocean to their spawning grounds up on this little river fork off the snake that I never heard of. But, uh, and all the stops along the way. And she also talks about the, uh, the, the hoops she had to jump through uh, to get into the dams to uh, photograph the fish ladders and uh, uh, she had to, she kept a log with daily temperature checks for the whole thing so she could document, yes, I'm a responsible person, I'm doing the right thing. It's a pretty interesting overall project. So from the Columbia on, and then up the snake. Columbia, up the snake to the Yankee Fork. And she does it, she presents it all in, a, in as neutral a uh, presentation as, as you could expect even though she she interviews people from both sides of the the conservation uh, viewpoint the uh, it's it's really interesting the number they they count fish and uh, the number of salmon that they would expect to have to have to take them off endangered species is something like 30,000 visiting this thing today or this last season they got five so, uh, yeah, if you like salmon, then you get, a good, get a good look now because it may not be around for long. Yeah. Well, they took, uh, about 20 years ago, they took freshwater salmon out of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon, and they dumped them into the Great Lakes because the Great Lakes were full of uh, uh, trash fish that came in through the St. Lawrence Seaway and the salmon in the Great Lakes have just prospered. Um, it's one of the largest sport fishing industries in the country now with the charter boats that go out to get salmon. And on some time early in the spring and early in the fall, I can even catch them off my beach. They're so proficient. And we get coho and we get these uh, crossbreed uh, salmon who have crossbred in the Great Lakes. It's kind of interesting. Are they going down uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway to the ocean and back up? No, these guys have adapted and they only live in the Great Lakes. And the state of Michigan has weirs set up and they catch the salmon, take the eggs out of them. They have seven hatcheries all around the Great Lakes. They hatch them into fingerlings and they truck them into streams, different small streams all along Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. And when this four years later, those they don't know where they go. They come back to those streams. Interesting. Are they still hatching them from from they, harvested eggs? Yes, they do it every year. They, what uh, happens if they stop doing that? I think the salmon population would drop. I really don't know. They have a, a fishing license program that pays for it. So when you buy your fishing license in Michigan, it's got an extra salmon fee tacked onto it that pays for this whole program of, uh, of keeping the salmon in the Great Lakes. It's an interesting, and then this year for the first time, um, the state of Oregon came back and got salmon eggs and a uh, fry, the small fish, because um, they were endangered, that same species were endangered in Oregon. And so they were taking them back the other way. Hmm. So that would have probably been at uh, putting them in at uh, Bonneville. I that's believe that was right, Grace, yes. That's the first dam. And uh, that's where they have a big hatchery. Yep. But Larry might be interested in the fact that, uh, you know, the salmon run up the Columbia ends at Grand Coulee Dam. And uh, Paul... <coughs> wrote the history of Grand Coulee Dam, if you ever are interested. Um, it's called Grand Coulee, uh, Harnessing a Dream, right, Paul? Harnessing a Dream. Anyway, uh, when they were getting ready to build it, uh, they consulted with uh, people in Canada and let them know that that would stop the, the salmon run going into Canada. And Canada said, huh, no big deal. Uh, they weren't interested, so okay. Grand Coulee went in, and Canada doesn't get any salmon because that stopped the run. 
Yeah, I know it runs up. The Fraser is the big one. Yeah. 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 And there was a big problem there because there was a major, um, what would you call it? A, a, the edge of a cliff broke off and stopped one of the major rivers. Yeah. And that was last summer, last spring, I can't oh, recall. Really? Anyway, further to what Gene was saying, I, I find that interesting because we have a, uh, a fish hatchery in our little town run by some kind of a club. And they also have a big salmon derby in town here. In fact, I think they have a couple of them a year. Gets all mm -hmm. sorts of people in. I've never had anything to do with it. I'm not a fisherman. I've tried, and I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> well, they are tasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get them in the store. <laughs> they taste the same. <laughs> uh, yeah. The only thing I can say about them, normally people who are fishermen catch their fish and they bring them in the boat and you take the hook out of them. These salmon, you got to bring them in the boat and you better have a, a baseball bat with you because they're going to be biting your leg, your feet. They, they're they really, really aggressive fish. Hmm. Okay. Well, does anybody else have anything yeah. to share? <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, side conversation. I'm oh. f talking about Zoom for the first time. Uh, I'm using Zoom on a Linux computer right now. And uh, it's working really, really well, surprisingly. It, obviously, this Zoom runs on anything. I tried it last week on my phone, and then I tried it this week on this computer, week before on a Mac, and it's run well on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We will be experimenting. Holly's going to do a little experiment this Thursday to see if we can use it with a large group for a lecture series. So we'll find out how that goes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> any, any word on the camera club? Any uh, uh, news about what anything's going to happen? No, we've been kind of, I'll, I'll repeat it for Linda. She's shaking her head no. <laughs> um, the board's talked about it a couple times, but there's still a lot of apprehension about opening and monitors and and you know the COVID, so they just decided to put it off for a while and and make a decision later. Yeah, yeah well, I, I see. I see good. Larry giving me the clap. Yeah, and, I think we should wait. Yeah, it's pretty much what everybody has agreed to. Mm -hmm. Although I think you're going to see more and more of this Zoom coming on, and I don't know. We even had a side discussion on whether the charge do next year. So I'm gonna sit down and wait and see. Is that good, Linda? Shake your head. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to repeat what you would have said. Let's see if I have anything. Um, okay, so somebody else, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to read the chat, although you guys can all read the chat for yourselves. Um, Linda says, um, it works great on my iPad. Uh, but I can't do the SIG on my, no, probably not. That would be very difficult. Uh, uh, did you read your newsletter? Um, yes. does, uh, no, no. <laughs> I must not have. <laughs> I need to go read it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like this sign language. <laughs> right. Um, and so I didn't get an answer about anybody else having anything to show today. If anybody's interested, I can uh, show a little bit on my approach to storyboarding, which is more like a script. I saw there was some discussion on that uh, yes. in previous weeks. Okay, That'd be let, great, me, Larry. let me let me see if I can figure it out again. There's no sound except my voice, so that might help. <laughs> and how do I do this? Okay. Green button, share screen. Well, share you have you logo. have you have what you want to share all up and on your screen, and then go back to Zoom to share okay. it. Okay, so it's up. There we go. And okay. So there's share. 
No, I had the same problem before, and I hit share, it doesn't do anything. Let's sure, it share. Is sure. it share? Not yet. So, so, when you, so when you go to share, on that white page that you get there, you get in the upper left-hand corner, it'll be in blue that's your desktop. But below it and somewhere else is going to be the document you want to share. And you, so you need to click on it and say share. Yeah, okay. When I click on share screen, oh, there it comes. Okay. And you get a white screen, white yeah. window. Click on the one I want and click share on that. The one you want. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. That come across? Yay. Okay. Yes. It's right there. Okay. So I, uh, most of my stuff has been from material I've already gathered. You know, I go on a trip, I shoot a bunch of stuff, and then I decide I want to show, make a video out of it. So I figure out how I'm going to do it you know, what kind of sequence I'm going to use. And then I start writing this script that you see here. Serialize everything on the left hand side so I can identify each uh, the audio clip, which is the, uh, the basis of the script. And I've got a, a second column where I can put any information on the clips I'm going to uh, uh, associate that with. And on the right hand side, um, I can add other stuff like the uh, uh, things I have to get done or uh, music I want to use. I can put that in there. And then as I go through, because the, I, I re may record the whole thing at one time, but I do it in discrete chunks or I cut it up into discrete chunks. So it's quite simple to replace parts or to just uh, uh, modify one of them. So that's that's why I find it very helpful that way. And I also do it with a, using two computers. I'll have the, the editing on one computer and I'll have this um, script on another computer so I can make notes on it without messing anything else up. Anyway, that's, that's an approach that I found worked really well. But everybody needs to develop their own approach. Any questions? No, do you have a column heading on that on that page? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is that? Syria? What is First one is serial. It's it's serial. just the, okay. the okay. column is is narrow. <laughs> Got so it. Serial video okay. narration, music comments, anything that I want to uh, associate with that as a reminder or something I have to do. I don't know if there's anything what? else in here. What you have it. here, Larry, in, instead of a storyboard, is you have a shooting script. That's right. In, yeah. In technical terms. Yeah, that's what Phil had had said when I showed it to him. He said that's yeah. more what they do on TV, uh, yep. rather than rather than a storyboard, more of a script. Shooting script. Okay, I'll call it the right thing then. <laughs> it's a it's a neat way to do it because you can set this up with a spreadsheet or a word processor, and then you've got a template. And every time you look through your, I want to say, raw footage, um, you can start to pick stuff and put it in there. Um, some of the people who use this technique go through and actually cut their raw video into segments that mark like the intro, and they'd call that one intro. And then they, they're doing pre-editing and putting the pieces together. I don't know if that's the way you do it, Larry, but. No, I, I uh use a system to identify all my clips, stills, or video um, from, from an org chart that I put together uh, when, I'm, when I'm starting to organize the material. So for instance, for this one you see here on Yukon, Alaska, I had uh, identified everything that was involved with, uh, trying to think what I did on it now. Um, Everything on uh, Yellowknife was pre, all those clips were prefixed with a Y. Everything on Whitehorse was oh, okay. prefixed by a W. And then within those, I would have subsets. So it brings everything together in the, in the, uh, uh, in the files, 
all the things you want together are automatically put together. So it's easy to keep a track of it that way too. Yeah. Hmm. Anything know. else? No. No, no, thank you for sharing. That's definitely yeah, thanks, a different, uh, different, different way. And we haven't seen that uh, presented yet. Very good. Actually, I did years ago, but it's a bunch of new people here. Well, we're new <laughs> Well, with us, you can do it again in two weeks. We will always remember. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so now, again, anybody else? Grace, has this been a big burden for you hosting this? No, other than I was telling the, I was telling them before you got on that big, big kudos for Peg last night because she sent me an email and said, I haven't gotten the invitation for tomorrow. And I said, oh, oh my gosh, I've been working on so many other Zoom projects that I'm doing that I forgot to send it out. So that's why you got it late last yesterday afternoon. <clears throat> and I really appreciate that, Peg. And if the rest of you no don't, then, yeah, although I think it's back to Jean now. Uh, but okay, uh, I, that's, what, that's what I was asking you. Yeah, I'll pick it back up next Monday, no problem. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, anyway, no, it hasn't been a problem actually. <laughs> It's just I have to calendar in not only the event but the when to send the invitation. <clears throat> you need you need a storybook. Well, <laughs> this, this is what my calendar looks like. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gene, are you back in uh, Green Valley? Yes, yes, we got back Saturday. Um, oh. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We flew out of Michigan. We didn't have any problems at all. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the plane was 40 minutes ahead of time when we got to Tucson. So it worked wow. out real well. Yeah, we didn't have any problems in traveling with my wife. She has limited mobility, so it's a little bit hard, but we got this wheelchair service from American Airlines. They were great. Uh -huh. Everything worked out fine. Good. And my grandson works at a uh, clinic, and so he gave us these E95 masks to wear on the plane. And I often wondered whether that stuff works or not. And I wore the mask and we were just getting ready to come into Tucson. I took it off to get a drink of water. And I said to my wife, dang, I took that mask off and this plane smells like disinfected everywhere. You couldn't even smell smells through that mask. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. So, so was that a direct flight? No, we had to fly from Detroit to Chicago and then we transferred down to Chicago. Nothing from Detroit to here is a direct flight. Yeah. Anyway, so, well, if we don't have anything more to share, then uh, we will Linda has a question. welcome back Linda and next week maybe uh, with a um, well, if Linda, if, is Linda, <laughs> are you on an iPad? No. Oh. oh. You on a Windows machine? Give me a heads up. Your laptop. It's something to do with the settings menu on your laptop and you're going to have to go there and make sure that your internal or external microphone is selected. I had a lot of trouble with one of mine. Yeah. I know. We're going to have to find somebody you need, to help you. You need a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that look. <laughs> Something you might look into. I right, Here I am waiting for <laughs> What are you looking into? I cannot read lips. Yeah. Um, no. Linda, look at... Um, Write it in the chat, Linda. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Microsoft LifeCam Cinema 720p web cameras. Um, they are 60 bucks at Adorama. They've been around for many, many years. The the one that I'm using, I, I dug out of a drawer, uh, got it 12 years ago. Um, I don't know. This is 720p. It looks looks fine on my monitor, mm -hmm. but it's got a built-in microphone because I don't have a mic on my computer either, but it's in the camera and it works well. 
do you want to do you want to put that in the chat uh and then it'll be there uh, i will right? it'll be there with the recording i'll uh, share the screen and you can actually see it um, okay because linda is asking does anyone have a suggestion on a mic for my laptop that's what you're talking about right now there it and, is um, right there okay and okay. It's, um, that's also available on amazon yeah life yeah. Game, huh? okay and uh, Linda, you were saying something about an iPhone and a watch purchase. Is that correct? Okay, mm. like like this watch. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are good. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you have one? No, not yet. <laughs> Want one? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just buy my stuff from Apple, but I guess uh, you can get them from other places too. Amazon. Probably, yeah. <laughs> what can't you get on Amazon? Right, <laughs> right. I mean, the, late, the latest version of Apple Watch uh, looks really tempting, but uh, because I only have a version, a Series 2, which will give me a heartbeat, but that, I mean, a pulse but it doesn't do any of the rest of it. Um, but um, since I have one of those little cardia devices that you put use your fingers on and I can get an EKG, I don't need the watch that does it. But if I didn't already have that, that's what I would probably buy is the watch because I have AFib sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so that's what I need to keep track of. So it's either... A, a cardia device, which is only $99, <laughs> but there are a lot of other things on a watch that uh, they're, they're doing right now. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> She's got a knockoff. <laughs> Some of those are pretty good, though. Oh, um, it'll recall. Okay, but it records falls, and that's good. The new, uh, the new Apple Watch re will record falls. Uh, mine will. Um, so, you know, someday I'll have to upgrade, but not right now, but that's a good feature. Anyway, so. <laughs> I'm not. Linda said she couldn't host a Zoom on her iPad. I've even hosted one on my Android phone. Um, I didn't seem to have any problem at all with it. It, it was a little hard to see the, the parts of the screen sometimes on the phone, but it worked. And I'm working on a laptop that's not much bigger than an iPad right now. So it just depends. I have an iPad and it's great. Yeah. yeah. I Maybe shaking her head no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I would want to run a class on it. I No, it would give me no. a headache real quick. Yeah. No. Uh, no. So. Anyway. <laughs> well, I think I, well, I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. You, can keep, yeah. you can keep visiting. Uh, well, I'm going to say bye to everybody and we'll bye -bye. send you stuff out for next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to somewhere I have to stop the recording. Thanks, Grace. Oh, there we go. Oh wait, no, I that was a cancel. I want to yes, I want to stop the recording.